First up, we have an appointment with Robert Almy of Weston and Sampson to present the ADA transition plan. Robert? This is Robert Almy from Weston and Sampson. Um, today we'll be discussing how to make campus buildings and parks ADA compliant. Um, my name is Brandon Gomley, I'm an administrative assistant at the Select News Office, town of Pembroke. Uh, today we'll be discussing the American with Disabilities Act, uh, the Municipal Improvement Grant, the self-evaluation, the transition plan, the agreements plan. Uh, the American with Disabilities Act is the main reason we are um, moving forward with the self-evaluation and the transition plan and also the grievance plan. Um, it's a federal law and related to the regulations and guidelines. Uh, the ADA was enacted in 1990 and then amended in 2008. And what does this mean for Pembroke? We need, to, we need to do a formal evaluation to balance ADA compliance um, and a plan to meet the new regulations to come. And it's an opportunity for us to receive funding for um, ADA improvements throughout the town. Currently, we, we do comply with ADA in the town of Pembroke. Um, to date, we've, we have handicapped parking in our buildings and in our parks. Um, we've created uh, ramps to access the buildings. The recent evaluations for compliance with 2010, uh, the, the self-evaluation which is a formal survey of the six buildings and parts of the town. Um, and then the transition plan that was in Samson Creek. <coughs> the self-evaluation, um, it demonstrates what the town of Pembroke does to comply with ADA. Um, and it explains what we still have to do in order to comply with the American with Disabilities Act. Um, it's based on four priorities that Robert will discuss. The, um, the details for compliance with the Americans, Americans with Disabilities Act are contained in regulations and in guidelines. And in order to gain funding for grants, it's important that the town go through the formal steps of the self-evaluation, the transition plan, and the grievance plan. And then to have a uh, workshop discussion like this uh, that the public can participate in. Um, and then the town can apply for grants for some of the uh, more expensive items that will come up. Uh, the self-evaluation uh, and transition plan are based on guidelines and worksheets that are put together by uh, nonprofit organizations that promote uh, disabilities compliance. Um, the, we used an ADA checklist that was developed uh, by a New England nonprofit and we went through the six facilities in the town, the town hall, the uh, police department, uh, community center, library, fire, fire station, and the uh, senior center. And we also went through six uh, recreation facilities, which are um, the uh, town landing, uh, 
going to test me here. Uh, Be shit Lundin little Sandy. Ford, um, Stetson and uh, the, the little, uh, little Sandy. Little Sandy, and then uh, Tubbs Meadow. Right. Um, the there's a, a logical process that's gone through where the first thing you do is you you come into a facility and you look at uh, the approach and parking and check how a person with disabilities would view this and would instantly be able to understand how to access the facility. Um, the second stage, the second priority or in the hierarchy of evaluation are how would that person access the services or the opportunities in that building. So if they came into the police department, for example, can they get inside, and if they need to go to the, the uh, screen desk for information <coughs> to make a report, uh, is that accessible to them? Uh, the third priority are uh, is access to restrooms, and the fourth are emergency communications. Can a handicapped person within the building um, hear an emergency announcement or alarm? or if there's a need to communicate, do they have the ability to use whatever telephones or other facility or um, equipment is available. So that's it. those are the basic uh, steps for doing these surveys. Uh, the town's um, staff was very helpful with us. We went out in the field. Um, I'm the project manager. I had with me a landscape architect who looked at the recreation facilities and a uh, professional architect who looked at the buildings and, and helped with the observations. The, um, the actual um, observations are summarized in the report that your staff gave you. Uh, so if you look in the back here, you'll see um, the 12 areas that we looked at and there will be a description of the facilities. Uh, this is a little sandy. Um, the recreation facilities have some photographs. We talk about uh, what the facility is used for, what kinds of access is available, and then um, speak to barriers to access and long-term and short-term upgrades. Right? So that's basically how the transition plan is put together. Um, So these are the facilities we took a look at. You'll notice the, um, uh, the community center is not on the list of future projects. That's because we understood, we did an evaluation of it. Um, it's a wonderful old building, the older section of it. Um, it's the kind of thing, kind of building I'm interested in. However, because of its age and the nature of its construction, it doesn't lend itself to being um, upgraded to ADA compliance. So I understand that the town is actually looking at um, some future uh, replacement for those, uh, a home for those services. In any event, um, in the report, we have uh, detailed recommendations for the five buildings and the six parks. Um, the, uh, the projects and the actions are uh, shown at, with uh, either dates or general time frames. Uh, the near-term projects would be for uh, this year, uh, and would be accomplished with existing resources that the town has. The longer term projects require funding and or design and engineering and would take longer to implement. Um, it's important to note that with the adoption of, of the plans, uh, the town is exercising good faith and therefore uh, uh, can't be challenged for non-compliance in some, some area. So this is an important part of not only serving the community, but also uh, showing good faith efforts to the state and, and other people. Okay, so the transition plan, um, the bulk of this report after these tables um, are the reports for the transition plan. The table summarizes them. Um, they talk about uh, what the facilities are, what kinds of upgrades should be done, and then uh, the time frame. Uh, the focus for the transition plan is on physical facilities. There are other aspects of the Americans for Disability uh, Act that speak to uh, whether a person could, for example, come into a hearing like this 
and if they were hearing disabled, uh, whether they would, uh, with some lead time, be able to reasonably request uh, somebody to sign the presentations uh, or that the um, other means be made to deal with their disabilities. But this, this report focuses on the physical aspects of the facilities. Um, uh, I spoke to the short-term and long-term projects. We think we've got everything covered in here. And um, for my part, uh, my sister lives in Pembroke. My mom used to, and I deeply appreciate you guys doing this because uh, I've been working with public agencies for a number of years, and this is really the right thing to do, and I think your staff deserves a lot of credit. So I yeah, will be quiet. But Brandon finishes his presentation. I also want to discuss to you uh, about a grievance plan, and the grievance plan is a statement of intent. Uh, we don't currently have one in, in the town of Pembroke, and it's a process for filing a complaint or grievance. So if um, a handicapped person had an issue accessing one of the buildings, it gives that person an opportunity to fill out a piece of paper and then submit it to the selectman's office for your review. Um, and of course, it's also a process for resolving uh, the complaint. By adopting the self-evaluation and the transition plan and the grievance plan, um, it allows us to submit an application for the Municipal Improvements Grant. The Municipal Improvements Grant is aimed at supporting capital improvements, specifically dedicated to improving access for those with disabilities. It's uh, project grants are up to $250,000, uh, and that money can be used to initiate all of the recommendations that was in sense and made in the transition plan and everything that Stephen's office found um, during the self-evaluation of the five down buildings and parks. Um, the deadline for that application is October 1st, uh, which is Monday. Um, okay. uh, the town is acting in good faith to implement the uh, ADA. The town has prepared an ADA compliance framework, the self-evaluation, the transition plan, and the grievance plan, and the town put specific actions before the voters for approval and the town will seek grants to expedite the transition plan. So we ask you to adopt the self-evaluation, the transition plan, and the grievance plan, which will allow us to submit for the municipal <coughs> improvements grant. Also, there's a um, another uh, agenda item. Yeah, there's another agenda item for the ADA compliant ramp at the GAR Police Boys Club. Um, we ask you to that as well. Thank you. All right, thank you for that presentation. If you want to ask um, or let the board know uh, some of the projects that we're looking at to apply for by October 1? Yeah, some of the projects. The biggest one um, is town landing. Uh, Town Landing is not ADA compliant right now, um, so you know, Ed wants to be able to get somebody to the water and then also to the play area. And that can be done by uh, leading one mat that was already purchased to the play area and then one perpendicular off of that mat to one of the floating docks. With the funding for the Municipal Improvements Grant, we want to construct a ramp, an ADA compliant ramp, to get people that are handicapped into the water, um, also into the play area. Right now, the mulch at the play area is migrating into the sand, um, so we think it's a good idea to border off the play area and then put foam in place rubber. Um, that absorbs the shock for anybody that falls. Um, and that's one of the, one of the things that uh, the municipal improvements grant and fund. Also, in the town hall, all of the doorknobs, they're not compliant for somebody with a disability. So we want to provide uh, lever handles. This way, if somebody with a closed fist, right, 
they can open the doors. The bathrooms and the town hall are also not compliant. We need to put entrance operating door systems, the push button door systems. Um, so I think we need one of those uh, also at the police station. Um, other areas in Pembroke, uh, Herring Run Park would be uh, another stone dust path that goes from the parking lot so people in a wheelchair can access um, the other end of Herring Run Park across the bridges. Um, let's see. Uh, Council on Aging, the entrance on Council on Aging, there are two doors that are very close together. So one door has to remain open at all times because if a person in a wheelchair goes into the entrance and that door is closed, it's possible that they can get stuck inside between the doors. So that door has to be removed or the door has to be pushed back significantly with 10, 15 feet. Uh, not that far, but Far enough. Far enough, yeah. yeah. Um, in order to make that compliant, uh, in the plans, I think we suggested that the door be removed um, and then any threshold uh, or the door frame be removed as well. Um, and then a power door operator installed. There's a lot of areas in town that need power door operators and also lever handles, signage, parking spaces, um, designated and accessible spaces. And this plan uh, will help uh, initiate that over a period of time. And then also the municipal improvements grant will help fund it. All right, sounds like we have our work cut out for us. I just have, you have a yeah, I just have uh, one question about uh, Ludham's Ford. Um, hopefully, you put a note somewhere on your um, paperwork there that you're going to contact the North River Commission of any work that's going to be done in the park down there. If it's, within, if it's within 300 feet of the river? Lums and Ludums. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. We had that discussion about it. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Just, certain kinds of work. And I'm sure they'll pass whatever you've got, but it's just, it's just that uh, they've been kind of left, um, you know, in the dust here on some of the things, and, and it, it needs to be complied with. So thank you. John? It's, yeah. The 250000 Yeah. Is it up to 200000 Is that the mark you get to or is it basically one-time money up to 250000 and that's it or can we reapply for other stuff going on we can, in the future? We can reapply next year. Mm -hmm. um, you know this year it's up to you know it's up to the $250,000 and mm -hmm. what we did is we walked around with the contractor and he gave us quotes on you know what he thinks each thing would cost. Mm -hmm. So that was also one of the um, requirements for the municipal improvements grant. Um, so we kind of have, we know which which projects we'll submit for this year, and then we'll have to wait again until next year. Yeah, like I said, the only thing, the reason why I'm asking is to make sure that we're not maxed out on this grant and say, okay, Hemrick Savage has enough, we're moving on, and then we're flipped with the bill. So that's that kind of what I want to make sure that we're not going to be doing that if, if possible. Yes. <laughs> um, my understanding is that <clears throat> the whole business is around feasibility and a good faith effort. And so <clears throat> as long as you're working toward it, you have a plan. If you have to revise the plan for any reason, you can do that, the scheduling or whatever. Or if something else falls off the plan or gets added to the plan, it isn't that you're locked in forever on this particular set of projects. So. That's important. And then the, uh, the funding for this depends on the state's budget every year, of course. So we, we hope that the state will continue to fund these projects. These things, this has over the years been a priority, so we expect it to, but you know, we can't speak for next year's legislature. I also have to uh, also mention that the ADA was established prior to, I mean, our buildings and parks were constructed constructed prior to the ADA. Yeah. So, you know, they do take that into consideration. It's just, you know, this is just a plan to bring those buildings that were construct, constructed before um, the ADA was adopted um, to compliance. That's good. Sounds good. All right, thank you. Yeah, 
do we have the opportunity to do seasonal adjustments to these? Being Little Sandy Beach is an example. Yes. Um, they put two porta johns down there, and they either block off one parking space or the cars get so close to them that if somebody's inside, they can't get out. And you've got um, the opportunity to put in a one-stall handicapped unisex bathroom, and it would be on the inside of the wall, inside the beach, and would kind of solve the problem, um, you know, on a seasonal basis. It, it wouldn't be a year-round use, but they're not year-round useful anyway. I mean, you know, nobody goes swimming in December, or at least most of them. Yeah, I believe a bathroom was the, uh, the, the unisex handicapped porta potty is one of the recommendations for that site. Yeah, because you can't put a Title V system in there or at um, mm -hmm. or a town landing because remember of remember that there is a feasibility test here. So if you're with uh, Little Sandy, you've got real space constraints. For example, in parking. Right. And besides that, my understanding is that's pretty much a neighborhood facility. People don't drive from neighboring towns to use that facility. So You'd be surprised. <laughs> but still, the uh, if there's no <coughs> space on the streets for parking, then the town's not required to buy an, an adjacent house and tear it down and make a parking lot because that wouldn't be feasible. It wouldn't make sense given the size of the facility. Right. The so, um, you know, there are sideboards on which it's required. To yeah, there's some question as to who owns some of the land uh, in front of it as well. All right. Do we need to vote on this? Says the recommendation. <coughs> the one. You got a <coughs> town administrator's recommendation. Got a couple of motions that are been suggested. We should plan for uh, vote to adopt the uh, ADA transition plan. All right. We have a motion. Uh, second. All right. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Uh, All right. Yes. I vote I as well, so that passes unanimously. And then uh, it suggested that another motion be made to adopt the self-evaluation and the grievance plan. That is your recommendation? Yes, sir. I would move the recommendation of the town administrator. Second. All right, a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Did you vote? Aye. I vote I as well, so that passes unanimously. Thank you, Thank you very much. and. Uh, our thanks to uh, Weston and Sampson, who was funded by a uh, grant from the Community Compact Program, and uh, and to Brendan and our office for doing all the legwork uh, on this particular project. I think there's one other thing there that, um, that we want to vote to reopen the special town meeting warrant uh, for the insertion of the community preservation project uh, below and for the town administrator's capital request, which you're not going to do the capital request, and That's thing. correct. Okay. So it would just be, uh, I would make a motion to reopen the special town meeting warrant. Second. To insert the community preservation project, which would be um, recommendation H uh, to appropriate the sum of $20,000 from fiscal year 19 annual revenue and that said funds be granted to the town administrator for the purchase and installation of a handicap entrance ramp with the associated construction accommodations at the GAR will take any action relative there to second. All righty, then a motion and a second to reopen the warrant and insert this article. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye as well, so that passes. And is there any other business for the special? Well, we got uh, uh, Chief Assessor Kathy Salmon and uh, Town Accountant Michael Buckley. Uh, well, that's open. I'll leave it open so that they have something to go on it. All right, we'll address some other articles in the warrant. Just want to thank Robert and Brandon one more time. Thank you for coming in. We did go through the warrant in the last meeting. 
Uh, but this meeting will be considering recommendation on on those articles. So thank you for coming in. Well, I believe you folks have already recommended uh, one, two, and three. And we now are on Article 4. Yes, sir. It is the recommendation of the town accountant and the town administrator that the board recommend the funding of all the items that are on Article 4. Uh, might, there might be one change regarding um, the water department? Yes, with one exception, um, the $390,000 request for a generator between the plant is not necessary. It's included in the $1,750,000 $1, upgrade to the water filtration plant. So that item can be removed. <coughs> And, and one other recent change in Article 4 is that under uh, the DPW um, per highway tree, uh, the purchase of one 550 dump truck at a plow for $75,000 originally, um, I don't think we had a funding source for that, or it might have been free cash, but that's been amended to, uh, to borrow the money for that vehicle. Right, at the present time, we do not have enough money to provide for the 20 year budget and to pay for this truck with cash. So, if we choose to recommend it, then it would have to be a bomb. Okay, uh, before we go ahead and consider these, I'd like to read them for the folks at home watching. So, Article 4 addresses capital requests, and there are many various items within that. Article 8 is town building maintenance transfers. Article 9 is dispossession of property. Article 10 is also dispossession of property. Article 11 is the pavement management plan, which is 300,000 associated with it. Article 13 is a request to fund additional police overtime, which has $160,192 associated with it. Article 14 is a request to fund the hiring of two police officers for the balance of fiscal year, that's this year, I believe, as $77,663. Article 15 is a request to fund half of community center custodian, and that's $20,892. Article 16 is the seven CPC projects, recommendations A through G. Article 17 is the citizen's petition for banning plastic bags. And Article 18 is a citizen's position, a request state rep sponsor home rule petition regarding retiree health insurance. You want to go over each one of these, or you you want to do it singly? Uh, you want to go over each one of these, or do you want to do it singly? Um, we have. Why don't you go over them individually, and then I'll make a recommendation. So on one, article, one at a time. On Article Four, then um, the two changes to be submitted would be to borrow uh, DPW Highway Tree with a purchase of one uh, 550 dump truck. Well, Seventy-five thousand. That's going to be borrowed instead of free cash. And the other would be the DPW water. Um, remove that generator for three hundred ninety thousand dollars from the borrowing because it's included in something else. Um, other than that, that's um, recommend the yes. article as it's written. Yes. I'll second it. All right, the motion is second. All those in favor? All right. Vote as well. John, do you have a chance to vote this one? Um, the only thing I'm concerned about is, and it's not much money, but uh, the 5000 for the entryway exterior interior door replacement. 
Did we, uh, was that because uh, the door got blown out during the storms in March from the police department? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. That was part of the exterior door problem, but now the interior door is no longer um, impenetrable. So they want to do both the exterior entry and interior entry way in that lobby. They want to take care of both sets of doors, and they've found a good price. And have we heard from the state about any FEMA money coming to us from those storms? We, yeah, as a matter of fact, that's going in, but they said that will be submitted in the next couple of weeks. The last few bills are going in. And we did have some insurance in it. Thank you. Uh, then, yes, I'm a yes on Article 4. All right, that passes unanimously. Do we recommend favorable action? Next one's Article 8. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to recommend that uh, that be um, passed over. Um, I'm going to have that as part of the FY2020 budget. We'll make that reorganization for FY uh, in the spring. The recommendation is? Take no action. Take no action. OK. Uh, we move the uh, recommendation from the town administrator of taking no action. Second. All right, there's been a motion and a second to take no action on this article. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I vote aye as well. So that is a recommendation. Next up, we have Article 9 of dispossession of property. We recommend favorable action. Okay. And are any of these buildable? No. Okay, because we had put them out the last time we did them, or the second or the last time we did them, with a restriction that they couldn't be built. Well, on. there's a third list, and that's the one that Kathleen's got um, that she is going to be disposing of through the uh, through the process that she normally has been using. So you actually have three sets of properties there. You got one that's being um, transferred to the board of selectmen under the good care and custody of the board, and uh, the second list, which is Article 10, uh, goes to the Conservation Commission. Where's that third list going? Pardon? You said there's a third list. And that was the, the properties that Kathleen is keeping to dispose of uh, when no. she does the uh, auction. Okay. Yeah, my only concern with these is it's been in the past is that we don't, you know, sell a piece of land for twenty thousand dollars that opens up a the unit subdivision. No, that's not going to happen. Okay. We'll, we'll go along with the um, town administrator. All righty. So there's been a recommendation and a motion. A second. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I would as well. So that passes. Favorable action. Next up, we have Article 10, which is also dispossession of property, but this one is to the Conservation Commission. All right, we recommend favorable action. They're not buying their own land now. Pardon? They're not buy, buying their own land now. <laughs> this is your recommendation as well, Ed? Correct. I have one of the uh, town administrator's recommendations. Most of these are ones we've seen before, right, aren't they? Okay. Second. So there's been a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 As well. So that passes favorable action. Next up, we have the pavement management plan for $300,000. Um, I would love to say that uh, we would recommend favorable action, uh, but at this point, um, the funds are not available to fund Article 11. So we would recommend. Uh, Take no action. Um, move that uh, we go with the town administrators uh, of take no action. Second. Okay, there's been a motion. Second, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Vote aye as well. Is 
to the Zia passes. Uh, next up, we have Article 12, or Article 13. It's, uh, that's a request to fund additional police overtime. Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, using the same logic for 13 as we did for 11, I uh, uh, don't believe that there's money available at this point to fund Article 13. Question that since it is overtime, is it something they've already we have to pay it anyway? No, some, no, no, this is something he's uh, projecting out for the rest of the fiscal year. Okay, that he would need that at, the, at his current rate, so that's going to have to be a discussion at a later time. Okay. Um, with them regarding the use of uh, overtime, Mr. Chairman, I need to jump in here. <clears throat> Um, through 12 weeks, the um, police department spent $180,000 on the contract, um, $450,000 in At that rate, um, they will exceed budget by nearly $100,000. So, obviously, not sustainable. I would recommend that as the chief executive board of the town, we can have sooner or later a conversation with the chief. Well, thank you for that recommendation. And we have a recommendation for take no action on this article. I'll, I'll move that we take no action on this article until we speak with the chief about his his funding and what's going process going forward. Because I know it's a safety issue that came up, especially within Massachusetts, when it happened with the police officer in Weymouth, police officer in Falmouth, that it's police chief's trying to make sure that we're okay. And he has staffing levels to make sure that his guys are okay too. So, but for the time being, until we talk to the chief, I say take no action. Do you want to just skip the recommendation till next week? Rather than change your recommendation? Would the board be amenable okay. to that? Could we table it till next week? If possible, you could. You got till next week. Okay, and then I move that we table this uh, article until next week. And talk to the chief in the interim. Yes. Yeah, I can live with that. I second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second to table this article until next week. All those in favor? Aye. Vote as well. So this one is tabled. Next up, we have a request to fund the hiring of two police officers for a balance of fiscal year. And I believe that's this fiscal year. Am I wrong? Am I right? Mr. Chairman, the uh, yeah, I'm recommending that we take no action on that right now. The budget that was adopted by the Springtown meeting included no surplus funds. And so right now, um, that would... Uh, necessitate a deficit of $77,000, and I don't believe that there is um, a source of uh, funds to be used for this right now. All righty. So these recommendations so we take get no the action. Two, we get the two people in question. Are they already in the, uh, the uh, academy? These are two more. To move beyond what we have there now. Correct. We need him to. Well, the chief is going to come in, I assume, to. Yeah, why don't we put this off until the uh, same time next week? Yeah, I'll move the table for one week. Second. Okay, we got a motion and a second to go ahead and table this one as well, pending our conversation with the police chief. All those in favor? Aye. 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 As well, since so one is tabled. Next up, we have a request to fund half. Of the community center custodian bill. Mr. Chairman, uh, the town of Canton and I believe that uh, the recreation director has sufficient funds in the revolving account to pay for this salary. Um, monies that have been set aside to pay that custodian have been diverted to another um, uh, a situation where they contra she contracted out for the same services that this person was providing for. So it's our understanding that the, the, there's money available in the revolving account to pay for this, uh, the balance of the custodian salary for FY19. Okay, 
So is the recommendation is favorable? Take no action. Take no action? If she wants to take money from the general fund to pay for the custodian that she diverted funds in the first place. Yeah, when we're comparing custodial staff, no disrespect intended to police uh, overtime and having two police officers on, I think it's a relatively easy choice that uh, we take no action on the uh, custodial staff member. Okay. We have a motion to take no action. I'll second that. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. Yeah. Right. I vote aye as well. So that one is take no action. Next up we have Article 16, which is the seven CPC project recommendations A through G. Um, asking for a correction. We yeah, voted should, in one more recommendation. Should be H on there also. A through H. That's right. Thank you, sir. A through H. Uh, do we typically do these as a whole or individually? Usually do them individually. Individually? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So first up, we have recommendation A, and that's to appropriate the sum of 10000 from fiscal year 19 open space funds, and that said funds be granted to Pembroke Department of Public Works for the installation of a guardrail at the Herring Run Park. I move favorable action. Second. All right, there's a motion and a second for favorable action. All those in favor? Aye. I would aye. Did you vote yeah. yep. No, I, I voted in favor of it. Okay, so that one passes. Next up, we have recommendation B. As to appropriate the sum of 10000 from fiscal year 19 historic resources funds, and that said funds be granted to Pembroke Historical Commission for the exfoliation of poison ivy from the stone wall in front of the Friends Quaker Meeting House for preservation purposes or take any other action relative thereto. Can I ask which uh, Friends Quaker Meeting House is it? Is that the one on 139 and 53? Yes. I thought that was privately owned by the, or basically used by the Quakers. Because I've tried to basically get into that facility and they're telling me no, because it's private. So, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, if this is yeah, town. We can we can still do it even if it's private property. Okay. Uh, it's historic. We've done work mm -hmm. with the uh, church uh, across the street, First right. Church, uh, on some of their repairs. So it is within the bounds of the restrictions that are on this, and I don't want people thinking we're at home with we're and also police well, on the streets and. <laughs> Taking poison ivy, you know, a lot of money to get rid of poison ivy. Yeah, I know. Uh, but the historical commission, uh, have they been also been able to try to get outside money besides the stuff from CPC? Because there there are grants out there to help out these historical places just for repair updates. So uh, since I'm just wondering if uh, the town administrator, do you, do you know anything? If they've tried to get outside money for this besides the no, CPC? No, I don't. I don't, I don't know. Okay. Are you suggesting we can rent somebody with a couple of goats and... Oh, tried that too. They got kicked off that land, didn't they? <laughs> and then they'll get on 139 and it'll be a disaster. Well, we're recommending it to go on the warrant um, for the townspeople to vote on it. So if there's any questions about the about this and how much it costs or whatever, then I think that um, whoever's the chairperson of the store commission can actually come forward and tell the town what why it's costing ten thousand okay. dollars. I mean that's we'll only, appropriate, that only appropriate. Excuse me. Send it out for the recommendation of town meeting floor. Yeah, that would be. Uh, I'll second that. All right, we have a motion and a second for town meeting floor on this article. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. I vote aye as well. So that one's going to go to the town meeting floor. Next up, we have recommendation C, to appropriate the sum of 12000 from fiscal year 19 open space funds, and that said funds be granted to the town administrator for a study and engineering costs for a new ADA compliant facilities of the town landing on Wampatuck Street. Oh. Aye, so that passes. Next up, we have recommendation D 
to appropriate the sum of 10,000 from fiscal year 19 annual revenue and that said funds be granted to the trustees of the Cobb Library for light fixtures, carpentry, painting, and an outdoor hanging sign. I'll move to favorable action on recommendation D. Second. All right, a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So that is favorable action. Recommendation E is to appropriate the sum of 25000 from fiscal year 19 open space funds and that said funds be granted to the Pembroke Conservation Commission to the exec execution of a conservation restriction and signage at 190 Barker. I don't know favorable action. What that's about? Laggy property. What happened was oh, that okay. we, we ended up closing out the account before we spent all the money. I think that was originally appropriated. So okay. the CPC decided to come back in for a second appropriation. Yeah. Okay. To complete that project. All right, thank you. Okay, I believe there was a motion on that. And now there is a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I would as well. So it passes in favor of action. Next up, we have recommendation F to appropriate the sum of 7,500 from fiscal year 19 historic resources funds. And that said funds be granted to officers of the Pembroke Historical Society for the restoration of Pembroke Historical Society's buildings, ceiling, or take any other action relative thereto. I move favorable action on that. Second. So there's been a motion and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. As well, so move favorable action. Next up, we have recommendation G to appropriate the sum of 20000 from fiscal year 19 annual revenue and that said funds be granted to the officers of the Pembroke Historical Commission for an archaeological survey of the property of 369 Washington Street or take any other action relative thereto. And actually move this to town meeting floor. Second. There's been a motion and a second to move this to the town meeting floor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 as well, so that passes into the town meeting floor. Uh, Sabrina, you mentioned there's a recommendation H, H but it's yeah. not on my... It's That's the one it. you voted That's the one we meeting about the actually... handicap ramp at the GAR home. Oh, okay. We already actually addressed that. Yeah, we actually already addressed that. Include it. okay. Oh, yeah. so now we need to have a recommendation on it. decide whether or not you want to recommend about town meeting floor. Yeah. What your recommendation I move in favor of recommendation, Mr. Chairman. Second. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. All those in favor on that one? Aye. I would aye. So one passes into favorable action. And that will close out our recommendations on the remaining special town meeting articles. So I believe we can now close that, Warren Ed. Is that correct, Ms. Sabrina? Uh, well, you do have the two petition articles, but uh, regarding Article 17, the petitioner has asked to address the board next week at 7 o'clock to get a recommendation. Okay. Regarding the plastic bag um, ban. And then Article 18 is uh, the last petition article and the last article on this morning. Do we need a motion to table that or do we just not address it? It's your pleasure. Move it to table it till next week, 17 and 18. Okay, is there a motion? Uh, I second that. And second, all those in favor of tabling Article 17? Aye. 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 So that one's gone ahead and tabled. And also 18. Table 18? I think that's good. Just need a second. Yeah, second. Okay, now there's a motion and second to table Article 18 until next week. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. As well, so that is now tabled for next week. Now I can close that warrant. Move to close the warrant. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. The warrant is now closed. And that also concludes the board action items. Uh, I would like to address the Ask the Selectman article or part of our meeting out of order. I believe we have a visitor. Is there a reason you came in tonight? I do. Can you step up to the microphone, please, so the folks at home can hear you? My name is Burke White, and I live at 418 High Street here in town. Have for the past 
these 40 some years. I have come with two questions. The first question is, how many of you, if you raise your hand, if you have had a tick bite or you know someone who's had a tick bite? I don't know somebody. <laughs> no, we keep him out of the woods. It's <laughs> <laughs> on the beach. That's true. We make, we make him go everywhere else. But <laughs> well, My question is one that I've asked the directors at, at, the, uh, uh, at the Sportsman's Association uh, Club on Forest Street and uh, asked several other people because I've had, some, had one and it's had changed my life and, and I and I've heard stories that are just horrendous, horrendous uh, from doctors and, and others. And Plymouth County has, has uh, hired a uh, professional etymologist. His name is Blake. Tanius. Uh, exactly. Thank you. And his, uh, I, I uh, out of curiosity, I went over to Whitman where he gave a talk and I was incredibly impressed. Uh, the man's a scientist. He, uh, he was not swayed by anecdotal evidence. Uh, he was, has a lot to bring to bear. So the uh, uh, Bull Colony Sportsman's Association has agreed that we should have a, a public event. And, we'll, and I plan to have it uh, for just a, at the beginning of the meeting, which is next Monday, the first Monday of the month. Uh, that's October 1st. But uh, because it's going to be a, just a very abbreviated meeting, it's oriented specifically for prevention and prevention to oneself, one's loved ones, and one's pets, which uh, this young man knows quite a lot about. And uh, so how he's going to fit in that sort of time, I don't know. He's going to show some slides, and, and, and the organization, the club, has agreed that, that uh, this is something we ought to do because as as hunters and as people who are associated with the woods a lot, <coughs> every one of them raised their hands. Uh, there haven't been some that have been kept out of the woods yet. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, so my, my question to you is, what, what should the town do um, to encourage um, the use of tick prevention? It's just amazing to hear this, the most popular kind of things. My wife, for example, uh, hired a, a fellow to come spray lavender and uh, garlic throughout our yard and uh, smell nice for about a day and a half. But uh, I asked him specifically about it. He said, well, there are very definitive studies that that's not effective, that it doesn't work. And I was just impressed uh, with the fact that he had that science ready in his hands. And he has quite a lot of it. So what, what the uh, gun, gun club has decided to do is to invite him to come back as a, just a total public meeting not associated with the board of directors meetings or the, the annual, the monthly, monthly meeting of the, uh, of the organization, to open to the public on Wednesday, uh, the 3rd of October, for all comers, just to have a chance to uh, hear him and to discuss among ourselves what to do. So I was curious if the board has taken that action up, first of all. Has there been any kind of, um, other than just our lamenting and, and lamentation is worth undergoing. What can be done about this? Well, the spraying does do some um, positive effects on uh, mosquitoes and on ticks. Brad, by the way, is speaking on the 22nd of October at the Council on Aging in Kingston as a uh, guest of the Council on Aging because it's, it's bad enough to get a mosquito bite that's test positive for uh, Triple E or West Nile virus. But to get a tick bite, you know, you often don't know you've gotten it for days or weeks at a time, and it becomes a problem, uh, you know, much more so than it would have had you got the tick in the first place. But they do have some success with the spraying, uh, although there are people who don't want their property sprayed either because they don't believe in, you know, chemical treatment. So um, I think we could, uh, through the Board of Health because it's, it's there. Um, and I'm the health agent in, in the town of Kingston, by the way. So um, I had some experience with Brad over the past year or so, and he is very good. Um, I think we should direct it to the Board of Health to um, take up the, um, the issue of um, 
ticks because th this is the heavy tick season <coughs> to September and October and up until you get the first killing frost you can still have problems with uh, ticks but what we do um, as a board um, not here but in Kingston is we uh, send out a public reminder on the reverse 911 uh, system they have a they call it a chalkboard system it's a um, a town owned and operated um, emergency notification system and they will notify the uh, people that you know it, it's tick season you know look at your children look at your pets um, you know for mosquitoes don't leave you know the little wading pools full of water over the weekend or you know if you're only going to use them on Saturday dump it out and fill it back up again later it's you know a gross waste of water to some people but you know, it's a lot safer than having, you know, mosquito larvae in your, you know, your children's swimming pool. So there's a lot of things that, that we can do as a town that don't cost anything that, um, you know, let people know what they should be looking for. And, um, you know, don't be afraid to say to somebody if they're standing in line at the grocery store and they've got a short sleeve shirt on and they've got a tick, you know, let them know because it's, uh, you know, it's a very, uh, as you say, disturbing situation when you go uh, weeks or months without uh, knowing it. See something and say something sure fits with, uh, with ticks. I wonder if the board would be willing to encourage people in the town to come to the public meeting that's on the 3rd of October at the, uh, at the Sportsman's, the Old Pine Sportsman's Association uh, on Forest Street. Just to kind of make a public uh, acknowledgement that some organizations in town, including the Council on Aging and others, are taking it seriously. I was shocked to read that, that I thought, well, come September, October, that's the ticks that we, we survive. I can get I can go back into my own backyard. You know, I mean they really take the thugs have really taken over, but now I can and, and, and Blake explained to me very clearly that no they go for their they only eat they only uh, take three they only take three bites to live. And, and uh, procreate like crazy just on three fillings of blood. And, and, and you get that from a deer or you get it from a human being or, or a dog. Uh, and I was surprised to hear that, that September and October is a high tick season because they're feeding up for the winter. Right. And they can last all winter long. And I was even more surprised to hear that, that if you don't um, clean up your leaves in your yard and you live, leave them, you know, to spring just because you do that. Uh, but the worst thing that can happen is that the, the moisture is what's critical. They dry out in the winter and die, some do. But if you're in that and you have clumps of leaves that accumulate water and then you go to pick those up, just to get them in, you know, get them to, the, uh, to wherever, it's highly likely that there'll be ticks there that have wintered over in that moist leaf structure. So uh, I guess what I'm saying is that if, the, if, the, if the board was willing to encourage people to attend this public session uh, at the gun club, on, uh, I think we could all take aim on something that's a real serious problem. Well, well I know it's uh, PAC TV right here. Yeah. Pardon me? You have access to PAC TV right here and the uh, other Pembroke uh, news service that. as well. Yeah. And well, I appreciate that. In, in fact, uh, I placed three calls into those people and, and uh, they live there in Plymouth now. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, uh, and they've just been busy. You know, and I know that I've lost the things. I'm, I'm hoping that, that they could actually come and, and be there present that night. Oddly enough, we're taping a show the 26th that has to do with. Um, Ticks and uh, uh, well, this was mosquitoes and that kind of thing. Wonderful kind of sequel to that show in that September. Right. Yeah. Well, this would be October third, and it's going to be from seven to uh, to eight on October third. And I urge you gentlemen to show up. I mean, it's just amazing when we talk about protecting our, our loved ones, including our pets. This is. Well, I know I walked in off of. Uh, School Street to check the outfall pipe uh, that goes into Silver Lake um, in May, and it's not that far in off of Route 27. Walked in and walked out, 
and I counted 13 ticks I took off of me in just that short time. What he does is, he just to kind of prove a point, he'll take a sheet and just drag it over a, a kind of a, a wherever you want him to do it. Mm -hmm. and it's just incredible. He holds them up and, and you see, you know, mm -hmm. and there, there's some, there, there are different types. Of that. One of the great things about what he's doing is he's educating people, all, anybody who's willing to listen, but you need to know what ticket was that got you. It's, there are different types. And you need to know what kind of diseases those ticks are likely to have. And if you show up to a doctor's office and say, I've been bitten by a tick, you're really, you know, you're really not helping yourself. And I think there's a new strain of Asian tick also terrible. that has just come in that's even worse than the other tick. So. Terrible, terrible. And it's causing people to bleed, pursue, right from the nose, and just, you know, without the So I'm just urging the board. First of all, to attend. I think I just I think you you gentlemen really do important work for the town, and for you to get a tick bite, which is and one of those those that you carry in, and, and your animals too. Is, you know, dog jump on couch and you know worry about it's home. Well, it's probably one of the reasons that I stopped hunting in uh, <laughs> the Cape in in uh, Martha's Vineyard in Nantucket because they're probably three times worse than it is around here. True. Well, actually, so. I was surprised at it. He has, uh, he has statistical data from around the country. Wisconsin and Massachusetts are the worst places uh, for ticks. And Plymouth County, it, it gets a lot worse when you come to Plymouth County. Western Massachusetts doesn't really have a problem. But, but it, it's centered right here. It's like a vortex of the trouble. So I'm hoping that, that uh, you would come, first of all, just to protect yourself and, and to protect the community for your service. And thank you. But to find a way to invite people, in, and I'm really glad, I'm really glad, sorry, I'm really glad that, that, that PAC TV is here. And I'm hoping to be able to have them show up on uh, Wednesday at uh, 6 30 or so for a program from 7 to 8. It's going to be very interesting. I know it will be that. And, and then to ask, what else could we do? Well, it seems like a great idea, and for people who are concerned about this issue to attend, I think we could put it on our website. Is that right, Sabrina? Yep. We can go ahead and put it on our website to get it out to the town. Thank you. That, that was what I was really hoping for. I didn't want to have to mention, but that would be great. And anything else that you can think of that would encourage people to come out on Wednesday night from 7 to 8 o'clock on there on Forest Street. There should be some things in the paper with my telephone number on it, and I'd be happy to have anybody call me to talk about, especially being there and hearing this young scientist bring the news that he has. And my telephone number is 781-826-5674. Happy to tell anyone. Do you know, if, do you know if he charges to, to give a lecture? Right now, he's doing it uh, out of his concern and out of the county's concern that it's hired him. So yeah. it's free. Awesome. Well, maybe we can invite him. I was going to say, to Arthur's point, yeah. we can have you can send a letter on Mallet to sure. the asking them to sponsor that. Yeah. And we can give them the Veterans Hall and then look That would be wonderful. That would be a, mm -hmm. that really, it really is cumulative. And, you, and the point is made several times is it's not a find out and you found out, it's a situation of being current. Mm -hmm. And there was a time when you thought you could put a toilet paper to fill it with cotton and put wreath in it, and that will take care of it. And it's just not working. It's just the lavender and garlic not working. And it's not clear what is working. That's the problem. And until we all start thinking about it and, and take back our yards. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's terrible. So I, I'd be very pleased if you would have uh, been talking about it. I'll be, I'll be there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bill, did you say you went hunting in Nantucket? Mm. I didn't know they allowed that. Oh, there's, there's a lot of land in Nantucket. That's uh, woods, all woods. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's interesting. All righty. Uh, since there's someone asked the selectmen, does any of the other selectmen have anything? Hearing none and seeing none. I'll uh, we'll go ahead and move back on to old business. Anybody have anything for that tonight? 
Your nun will move on to the town administrator's report. Uh, just one quick thing. I attended a uh, conference at the uh, College of Holy Cross given uh, by the governor and lieutenant governor and his staff regarding uh, programs uh, ranging from economic development to housing production. Uh, and uh, this was kind of timely for us because we're looking at the uh, the project in the center of town that would be a mixed-use development uh, situation and uh, picked up a couple of pointers today. So, uh, so mm. getting up at 6.30 and driving to Worcester and, uh, was worth it. So, All right, that's uh, great work. It's very early. We all appreciate that. Next up, we have new business. Uh, anything out of this tonight? Hearing none, uh, we'll go ahead and move on to upcoming issues. On October 1st, the signing of the special town me meeting warrant to post October 9th will take place. On October 8th, there'll be no meeting in observance of Columbus Day. On October 23rd, which is a Tuesday night, the special fall town meeting at 7 p.m. at the high school will happen. On November 19th, there'll be class one, class two, taxi, precious metal, and license renewals will take place. On November 26th, there will be no meeting in observance of Thanksgiving. On December 3rd, the common Pictula license renewals will happen. On December 10th, the liquor licenses, live entertainment, Sunday and amusement device license renewals will happen. On December 10th, we'll set the winter break schedule. And December 17th, we'll discuss our 2019 calendar. Ed, is there a need for executive sessions tonight? Not tonight, Mr. Chairman. I would. Uh, I'm waiting to get a full board before we talk about a couple of these uh, subjects. All right, so that, I believe we'll have a full board next Monday night. Okay. Hopefully we will. So since there's no need for that tonight, uh, that concludes our agenda.